the Tampa Bay region is sought after by families, businesses, and global organizations as one of the most fruitful places to live, work, and enjoy the very best that life has to offer. It accounts for nearly 20% of Florida's gross domestic product and is the 17th largest economy in the U.S. And its 4 million plus residents make up almost a quarter of the state's population. But uncontrollable forces of change do not play favorites. Beyond protecting our environment, jobs, tourism, and property, laying an unshakable groundwork for our best possible future is key to staying the course. We understand that in order to rebound from disaster, we must enable even our most vulnerable community members to overcome the expected and unexpected challenges we'll face in the future. The Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council was formed to bring key governments together to harness our collective strength. Through collaboration, we redefine preparation from something done to avoid the worst to something done in anticipation of the best. Our shared focus energized the formation of the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition in 2018. These changemakers set forth to create the 18th such program in the nation, the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition. The coalition has grown to include 32 member governments in seven counties who ensure our region isn't just protected, but nurtured to thrive. The first of its kind in the Tampa Bay region, this resiliency plan is an actionable, scalable framework with ways to implement resiliency measures for each community's unique values and contributions to our region. Key to the plan's success was the holistic collaboration used to develop the plan across partner governments, leaders, and experts. This resiliency plan offers new ways to work together, as well as a menu of best practices that can be implemented with measurable outcomes. Additionally, the plan outlines high-level goals, objectives, and actionable instructions for local implementation and regional collaboration. And with 11 priority actions, we have the potential to be our most resilient. We live in a beautiful part of, of not only the country, but in the world. But living here takes great responsibility. We need to take care of our region. Protecting folks against flooding is critical. The priorities that we have structured in the resiliency plan are going to be beneficial for gr new growth that's going to be coming in. It's going to help the infrastructure we have in place so that when a storm event does come in, we can actually recover from it quicker. The reason I think those 11 priorities can make a huge difference throughout our county is because it provides a very specific roadmap. And in order to get where you want to be, it's important that you have directions of how to get there. This is an all hands on deck issue, and it's not going to just be the local governments that do this work. We're going to need the collaboration of our business community and our nonprofit partners to make sure that when we're looking at how we grow, that we're doing it collaboratively. And if we are not thinking bigger about how we build, how we rebuild, and how we develop going forward in the face of climate change, we become an unviable community for hundreds of thousands of people. We know that we can't stop storms from coming, but we know that we can have better policies in place to help people evacuate, but also have better building code in place so that there is somewhere for them to come back to after the storm. Making sure that we start having a dialogue between all these diverse communities means that we're gonna come up with all kinds of strategies that, that different other communities can use to fit their particular needs. We will see a tremendous impact on our quality of life. We will see it in our environment, we will see it in our air quality, we will see it in flood relief. The list really goes on and on. By focusing on things that acknowledge climate change, we are actually going to save money in the long term. It is, it is money spent now that will reap a lot of benefit later. Our main problem is congestion. We really have to work together to come up with solutions because we have major issues. All elected officials in the state of Florida 
has a responsibility to make sure that safety is their number one issue. If we do our jobs right in 10, 15, or 20 years, the majority of our citizens will be prepared for whatever is thrown at us. We'll do a better job at building so that we can start repairing and getting back on our feet faster. This change is gonna to have to happen. Uh, we have to focus on, on our resilience as a, as a community um, from a lot of aspects, from housing affordability to resilience to events like uh, hurricanes or, or, or rising sea level um, to traffic and, and transportation and, and, and changing uh, models of transportation that are coming whether we're ready for it or not. So, so we need to prepare for that to strengthen our community as a whole. The time for action is now. We can't really wait any longer. We've got elected leadership throughout this region that is ready to go and I could not be more thrilled at the prospect of, of what we're going to um, accomplish in the future. A resilient future for communities large and small requires action. The plan is extensive and comprehensive, but starting the journey to greater resiliency for our Tampa Bay region is simple. First, read the plan. You'll learn the actionable ways to ensure future viability for our community. Then, get involved with the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition. Through continued collaboration, we will prepare our region to thrive. Together, we create the Tampa Bay region's best future for generations to come.